Okay, hello everyone. I'm back again with another cooking tutorial. We finally had a little snow today, and it's been such a mild winter. You know, normally I would be making these hearty foods all winter long, but we really haven't had much of a winter this year. Um, but we did have a cold day yesterday and a cold day today, and I have uh, some chicken in the freezer. I thought, well, I'm going to make some chicken and dumplings. Okay, so to make the chicken and dumplings, the first thing what I've done is I've coated the bottom, coated the bottom of this pan with some oil. And the base for chicken, any kind of chicken soup or, you know, chicken and dumplings in this case, is always the three ingredients of carrots, celery, and onion. And I've got uh, onion, carrot, and celery in the pan and I've been browning them for a while and they're already been browned down and a little bit uh, softened. I'm going to lower my heat now. I had it on a really high heat. Um, the, the measurements on that, on the onion, carrot and celery, was approximately a half cup of celery, a half cup of onion, and a quarter cup of carrot. Now I add a little bit less uh, carrot because I think the carrot has a stronger flavor. Um, to that, I put a little bit of salt in. You could also add pepper if you like. I'm not a big pepper fan, so I don't put pepper in. And I've cooked the vegetables down until they're to a nice soft consistency. Okay, now, all I'm going to do is add water. I'm going to fill this pan up to nearly to the top with water. Okay. Okay, so now we've got our vegetables, our softened vegetables a little bit of oil, and water. I'm going to center this on the burner. To that, now today, I, um, because it's not been super, we've not really had a winter this year. This is one of the first uh, colder days that we've had. Uh, but it's been, you know, normally I would make this dish with one chicken breast, and that is all you need. Believe it or not, it'll be fine. But I had a couple in the freezer, and I wanted to go ahead and cook them up because, um, I don't want to let them get start getting you know frosted, burned in there. So uh, today I'm going to use two chicken breasts. But I, again, I almost you know the normal recipe for this is one breast. So I've got my chicken, one chicken breast in here. I'm going to go ahead and lower that in the water. Now you want it to be skins and all, because the skin is what's going to get. I'm just going to touch this with my hands. It's okay. The skin is what is going to mix in with the juice and the water, and that's going to give um, give you a nice, good stock for your soup or your uh, chicken and dumplings in this case. I before I put those in there, I had did wash them off, wash and rinse them off uh, before, and I had them in a colander. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to a medium heat, and I'm going to let this cook, and it's going to cook for a while. It's going to cook for a good couple hours, and this is going to reduce down, and what's going to be left is a nice uh, chicken stock. So we'll be back in a little bit to continue on to the next step of the chicken and dumplings. Okay, and I'm back, and these are really boiled down, as you can see. And I'm going to turn this down, this heat way down now, to a lower, uh, lower. Um, now I'm making this the traditional way because I didn't have any chicken broth, but if you have chicken broth, definitely you can use that, and some people use like half water, half chicken broth, and um, also with the dumplings, I did not have chicken broth. Uh, if you don't know how to make the dumpling recipe, by the way, you can uh, look on my channel and there is a demo of the um, how to make the dumplings. In that demo, I did use... Um, chicken broth. Today I didn't have any so I used water and it's no big deal. Either way is fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get these ch these breasts out. I'm going to try to get some of those carrots and stuff that are stuck to them and kind of get it out. I'm going to take them out and I'm going to set them aside in a bowl over to the side here to cool off because I'm going to need to peel the skin and uh, cut the meat off and then it's going to go back in. And as I said in the beginning, Normally I use one breast for this, so uh, I just happen to have two in the freezer and they're, I didn't want to, you know, let them get, go bad, so might as well just use them. Okay, now, now at this point I've turned the uh, juice down to a simmer, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some brown rice and uh, barley. So I'm going to take uh, roughly a, a good tablespoon of brown rice, two because I really like a lot of brown rice in there. Three, so three, uh, 
three scoops of brown rice. And if you wanted to, just use regular old pasta noodles of some sort. Like my mom used to use those klotchki noodles. And this could be just like a chicken soup and you wouldn't need the, the rice and barley. You don't need it anyway. And it's, it's, it's all to taste. So then I'm also going to throw in one, eh, you know, maybe about, about the same, about three good uh, tablespoons of barley into this uh, liquid stuff. And that was, it was boiling away as you saw when we started. Um, so I'm going to just turn that heat down and let that rice and barley start cooking in there. And then off to the side here, I've got my two chicken breasts, and they're still steaming away here, and I'm going to let them cool down. This is a great meal to make on like a warm day, I mean a cold day like today, um, because the steam, you know, especially like if in my case I have forced air heat, the house gets really dry. So the steam is rising up out of the uh, pot, and it's, you know, moistening the air and um, humidifying the air. And also it gives a good smell through the whole house. And it also warms up the house because that was boiling for quite a while. You know, that was on there for a good uh, two hours uh, to get it to boil down to. So it's like less than half of its original con consistency. So I'm going to let this rice and barley start to cook. I'm going to give this is going to probably take a good, you know, 15 minutes or so. I'm going to let this cook while the chicken breast calms down and uh, calms down while the chicken breasts cool down. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to do the dumplings and I'm going to add at the end a can of cream of chicken soup to kind of thicken it up. It's going to be uh, wonderful and delicious. So we'll be back in a little bit. I'm going to show you also how to get the uh, meat off of the chicken and put it to put it back in. Okay, we'll be back in a minute. Okay, everyone, I'm back and I've got... Uh, chicken breast. I, I couldn't resist. I did take a little piece off. You know, the really the best way, first thing you have to do is remove the skin. And the best way is just to peel it off with your hands. You know, that's the best way you can do it. And um, I'm going to give mine to the dogs. They're sitting over there ready and waiting. Um, it is not that great for them, but number one, I don't give it to them very often. And then number two, it's been boiled. I mean, a lot of that fat and stuff has been boiled out of it. Um, so then I, I am going to go through and kind of pick out the meat. A lot of people will like rip the meat and it'll almost have like a shredded appearance. Appearance. I, um, I am not too keen on that shreddy meat. I, I'm going to try to dice it up nice and neat. You can do that if you want. Like you would just be pulling this off I, and there would be like long strings of it. You can just pull it apart completely with your fingers. I'm not too hip on that. Like I said, what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to get all the bones out of it. And that weird discolored thing, that's yeah, going to be... And here's some more skin. So I'm just trying to get this all off. I'm going to pull the bones out of there, obviously, and then I'm going to give all this soft stuff and this... You know, the dogs will chow that right down, so they'll enjoy it big time. Okay. All right, so... Okay, I've got it. Let me move some of this off of here. So, you know, and you can, here's how you go. You could just like, you know, it'll be like these pieces here. I'll do one like that because I'm just going to eat it. You know, long pieces. And I don't really care for it like that. I kind of want mine sort of in a nice, I'm going to take a serrated knife or if you have an electric cooking knife and I'm going to cut it down into like chunks. I kind of like mine, you know, more like this, you know, little chunky pieces. Um... You can do it however you want. Just like the size of the vegetables, the size of the meat, you can do it any, however you want. You could throw in big giant pieces, you know. You could just throw a piece this big in if you wanted to. That's all a matter of uh, personal preference and personal taste. So I'm going to go ahead and go through and I'm going to chop up all these, uh, both of these. Um, yeah, and what works good too is a electric knife. And I really didn't feel like dragging out the electric knife, but that might have been a better option. But this is going to work okay. So these are the, you know, I like them kind of like this, kind of like in little chunky pieces like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of this, and I'm going to meet you back over the stove because we still have to do the dumplings. And I'm going to add in uh, my cream of chicken and some corn as well. So I'm going to meet you back at the stove when I've finished this. I'll be talk to you in a minute. Hey everybody, I've got the chicken all shredded up, um, and that'll be going back in last. This is quite a bit. This is maybe even a little too much, but I'm just going to go with it. Um, another thing I was going to say with the chicken meat, too, I mean, I, I, used, I used breast because they're supposed to be like the most healthy, 
but I mean, you could do. I know people that use a whole chicken. You can put the whole chicken in the pot. You can use just thighs. You can use breasts and thighs. I just always have used breasts because it's sort of healthy. Um, I what I've done here too. I wanted to go over real quickly. This is the can of chicken noodle soup, and obviously it's real, real like um, it's almost like pudding. So instead, you could add a little water, and I, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go into my thing here, and I'm just going to get a couple of maybe three, you know, three good tablespoons, and I'm gonna of my soup boiled down soup broth over here, and I'm gonna put it in my uh, cream of soup because that's gonna go in last, but it's gotta be broke down a little better. This is not going to, uh, you know, this isn't gonna work. Well, it would, but it, it's just gonna make it way difficult. It's it's much easier if you go ahead in the beginning and kind of liquefy, get this a little bit more pliable, a little bit more uh, liquefied. And that wasn't enough of the liquid. So I'm going to add one, you know, a few more. So just keep putting in. So you can use water too, but why not just use the regular, you know, oops, the regular uh, soupy, soupy substance. Well, it's still kind of thick, but it's a little better. We'll try it later and see how it's going to work. So I'm going to set this aside. What we're going to do next is the dumplings. Now, if you, I do have another video posted of just how to make the dumplings. Um, I made these ahead of time. They're getting it's kind of even a little risey or something. This is the consistency that I like my dumplings. You know, pretty pliable. Okay, so I'm onto my dumplings, and as I said, you can make them with um, chicken broth and that's really my normal way of doing it. I just didn't have to have any so I just made it the old-fashioned way with water. There is a video posted but the basic ingredient is flour with a little salt, one egg, and some liquid. Chicken broth, water, whatever you want to use. So in the last video I made the, I had a separate pot boiling for the dumplings because I was going to make them with uh, cabbage and um, kibasi. In this case because we have water right here, I'm just going to put them right in there. They're just going to go right in this, the soup pot right in. So I've got like a teaspoonful, and I'm just going to drop it. And maybe I do need to turn the heat up on this again and get it kind of like a boil. It's sort of been simmering. and Yeah, I think I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit. So I'm going to get this stuff kind of boiling again, a little bit of a higher heat. And, so you, and again with dumplings, just like with the vegetable size and everything, you can make them any size you want. I prefer a smaller dumpling roughly a teaspoon size or less. Um, some people make big giant, uh, you know, you know, tablespoons full. And you could also make them with um, potatoes and all sorts of other things that you can put inside dumplings. This is just your basic dumpling uh, recipe. Flour, a little bit of salt, one egg, and uh, water. So I'm going to just keep adding these dumplings in, adding them in. And some, you know, when you put it right in the pot there, you might get a little bit of barley or a little bit of rice kind of in your dumpling. But to me, that's okay. I, uh, that doesn't bother me. But if it bothers you, or you think it might bother you, then maybe you ought to make a, a separate pot of boiling water to add your dumplings. Okay, so I'm just keep uh, keep adding these uh, dumplings in, you know, and I think I might have made a little more. You don't have to use every bit of it, you know, if, if it's uh, if it's too much, then I won't use it all, you know, but uh, better to have more than enough, I think, than not enough, probably. Okay, so normally if you make dumplings you, in the pot of water, you kind of watch for them to come to the top. I've got my old fork here. Um, in this case, that's not going to happen, obviously. But the, here, that's cooked. You know, they get they get hard. So I'm going to give these this first batch more or less a chance to cook, and then I think I'm going to kind of add more. And then how I'm going to handle it? I don't want to mush them together now because um, they're still kind of gooey liquid. But as they kind of get done, like see this one's done, you know, and they come out in weird shapes, and I I like that. I like the weird shapes. I think what I'm going to do is as I kind of get them done, I'm going to move them over to the side over here. And um, and again, if you're not sure about this part, then, you know, do a separate thing. That's fine. Just have a separate pot of water. And as they get done, you know, just cook them in the normal way, the usual way. Just finishing up my dumplings. I'm waiting for the last few to kind of get, uh, you know, become solid. 
because that's what you want. You want them to be solid. And as soon as that happens, I am going to, or they're solid enough where they're not going to stick together or stick to anything or they're, you know, um, in a normal situation or the usual, maybe not normal, but the usual situation, you would wait for them to float to the top, but that's not going to happen in this case. Okay, so now I'm going to add some corn. And again, I like quite a bit of corn in this too. See, this is, uh, you know, my chicken and dumplings recipe is not far off from really a corn chowder either. I mean, it's not really, um, it's not really, I like a really thick and a lot of different ingredients in there. Mm, so that's looking so good, so awesome. Uh, now the last thing that I'm going to put in there is my cream of chicken soup, can of cream of chicken soup. And then if you weren't going to use or you didn't want to use the can of cream of chicken soup, you could definitely just make some kind of a roux, uh, which would be, you know, um, maybe with cream, flour, you know, thickened with flour, butter, something like that. But I've always put that, you know, I've been using this cream of chicken, and it just seems to be the perfect thing for me. Or you could just you have it like a soup. You don't have to add this last step of this big thickening agent. I happen to like it really, really thick and creamy. All right, this is really coming together nicely now. Um, the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add the chicken meat back in also, which I've cut into smaller pieces. That one's kind of big, but for the most part, I've got them in like little small pieces like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put that chicken meat back in. And that is the final step of the delicious and totally tasty, totally hearty. This is a great thing to have like on a cold day in the winter. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this on a low, low, low heat for a few, what I'm going to do now is just put this on a low heat for a few minutes to kind of let all the flavors meld together. And this dish is so awesome served the next day. Like we'll be eating this for at least two to three days as long as it will last. Okay, so mine, in the end, it's like this. You know, it's like a really, really thick, thick, hearty soup. Chicken and dumplings. Enjoy.